The new Razer Blade 15 Advanced and ASUS Zephyrus S GX701 are both powerful gaming laptops, while still being quite thin. So what's the difference between them, and which should you get? In this comparison, I'll look at pretty much everything to help you decide which one is right for you. First, let's cover the differences in specs between the two units I'm testing with. The main components are the same. They both have the i7-8750H CPU, 90 watt NVIDIA RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics, while the memory differs a little. The Zephyrus has 24 gig in dual channel, as 8 gig is soldered to the motherboard and you only have a single memory slot. While the Blade has 16 gig in dual channel, but two memory slots. For storage, my Zephyrus had a 1TB NVMe M.2 SSD, while the Blade had a 512 gig one. Though storage and memory configurations will vary. They both also have a 1080p 144Hz IPS screen. However, the Blades is 15.6 inches, while the Zephyrus has the largest 17.3 inch, as it's a bigger laptop. For network connectivity, both have 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5. However, as both are on the thinner side, neither have an Ethernet port. So you'll need a USB dongle for both if you want one. Both are also available with RTX 2060 or 2070 graphics too, so expect different results with those models. You can find up-to-date pricing linked in the description. While it would probably make more sense to compare the GX701 with the new 17-inch Razer Blade Pro, or otherwise use the 15-inch GX531, I unfortunately have not had either for testing yet, and this comparison was still highly requested. I'll also note that both of these laptops are being refreshed with 9th gen models, however I don't expect that to drastically change the results in this comparison. On top, both have solid metal lids, a brushed metal finish for the Zephyrus, and a black anodized finish for the blade. Inside, both have a solid metal matte black interior, and they both felt extremely well built and premium with no sharp corners or edges anywhere. As for size differences, as you'd expect, the Zephyrus is larger as it's got a 17 inch screen. Though both are on the smaller side for their class, which results in thin screen bezels. As for weight, with just the laptops only, the larger Zephyrus is around half a kilo heavier, and then around the same difference still once we include their 230 watt power bricks and cables for charging. Due to the size and weight differences, the Blade certainly has the win in terms of portability here. As mentioned, the screens are similar, though different sizes, and the Zephyrus also has the option of G-Sync while the Blade does not. The Zephyrus had just slightly higher colour gamut from my tests, however the results were close. The Blades was a little brighter though, while slightly better contrast ratio with the Zephyrus. Overall to me, I thought both looked quite good. In terms of backlight bleed, the Zephyrus was looking a little better, however I never actually noticed any problems with either while viewing darker content, though these results will vary by laptop and panel. Both had some screen flex, which is expected as they're on the thinner side, but they felt sturdy as both are solid metal. Both also have the hinges out towards the far corners, which helps with stability. I could easily open both up with one finger. The weight felt evenly distributed with battery down the front and cooling up the back. This is where we start to see the unique Zephyrus design. When you open the lid, the back rises up to allow air to exhaust, improving cooling. This also means that you can use it on your lap or a soft surface like your legs or a bed without having to worry about the intake vents being blocked, a concern for the blade. Despite the thinner screen bezel of the blade, the 720p camera is still up the top in the center and it's got infrared for Windows Hello support. The video quality is pretty terrible, very blurry, while the microphone sounds about average. ASUS took a different approach, and included an external camera that you can mount above the display or off to the side. It connects with an included micro USB cable. It's a 1080p 60fps camera, most other laptops are 720p 30fps. It looks pretty good and the microphone sounds really good too. The keyboard layout is where things start to change. The Blade has your traditionally placed keyboard with very large touchpad but no numpad. While the Zephyrus brings the keyboard down the front and cramps a thin touchpad off to the side. The touchpad does at least double as a numpad, but I personally don't like using it, though it's less of an issue if you're using an external mouse anyway. The Zephyrus needs to do this, as the whole back half of the keyboard is used for air intake, and we'll see how this helps thermals later. The Zephyrus also has this scroll wheel, which lets you easily adjust volume or mute it, and both have speakers on the sides of the keyboard. I didn't have them at the same time, so can't do an accurate comparison, but from what I noted in the reviews, both sounded good for laptops. Both had minimal keyboard flex while pushing down hard. The Zephyrus had a bit more towards the back, which should be expected as it's raised up, though overall was still quite solid. No issues with either during normal use. Both keyboards have individual key RGB backlighting, which can be controlled through their respective software suites. 
The ROG logo above the keyboard on the Zephyrus also lights up and can be controlled too. Oh, and while we're on the subject of RGB, the Zephyrus also has lighting on the left and right sides underneath from the air exhausts. Back to the keyboards, both will find to type with if you're using them on a desk. You can just push the Zephyrus back to get more comfortable. On your lap though, the Zephyrus is a bit uncomfortable as you need to push it further back or otherwise move your arms back to compensate for the front keyboard. Here's how both sound to type with to give you an idea of what to expect. Fingerprints and dirt show up on both matte black interiors, but as they're smooth surfaces they're easy to clean. On the left, the Zephyrus has an air exhaust which the blade is missing, otherwise both have the power input on this side and 3.5mm audio combo jack. The blade has two USB 3.1 Type-A ports, while the Zephyrus has one which is Gen 2, though the Zephyrus also has a HDMI 2.0b output and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, which is also wired for DisplayPort 1.4. However, no Thunderbolt 3 in the Zephyrus. On the right, this time the Blade has one USB 3.1 Type-A port while the Zephyrus has two, meaning both have three in total. Both also have Type-C ports here, USB 3.1 Gen 1 with no Thunderbolt on the Zephyrus, while the Blade's has Thunderbolt support. The Blade also has a HDMI 2.0b output, but also a physical mini DisplayPort 1.4 output, while both have a Kensington lock towards the back and another air exhaust vent for the Zephyrus. Overall, the I.O. is similar. Key differences are that the Blade has a mini DisplayPort output, while the Zephyrus has DisplayPort through its left Type-C port. The Blade has Thunderbolt 3, while the Zephyrus does not, and the Zephyrus has exhaust vents, while the Blade does not. No major differences on the front, while on the back, the air exhaust vents are more obvious on the Zephyrus, which also has its status LEDs here in the center too. On the lid, both have logos that light up. The Blade's logo only lights up green. You can either set it to static, breathing, or turn it off. The ROG logo on the Zephyrus only lights up red. I couldn't adjust the colour here either. Underneath, both are clean looking, however there are some big differences here we need to discuss. With the blade, it's just got small air vents directly above the intake fans, and the bottom can be removed with a T5 Torx screwdriver, so getting inside is fairly simple. The Zephyrus on the other hand has a flat panel. No air vents are needed due to its unique cooling design. Opening the lid of the Zephyrus moves these corner feet out, which push down a metal plate to elevate it up and allow air to exhaust out of the gap. Due to this mechanism, opening it up is a little more involved. Like the blade, it also uses T5 screws, while the back panel that gets pushed down has four Phillips head screws. After this panel has been removed, there are eight more Phillips head screws to remove. After these are out, you flip the laptop over and carefully pull the panel from just below the monitor, being careful as there are four ribbon cables attaching it to the motherboard. It wasn't hard to access, but definitely more challenging when compared to the blade. Inside, we can see both have the batteries down the bottom and a single M.2 slot. The Zephyrus has just the one memory slot, while the blade has two, as the Zephyrus has 8 gigs soldered to the motherboard, which cannot be upgraded. However, I have heard of people having success installing a 32 gig stick into the Zephyrus for a maximum of 40 gig. The blade on the other hand supports up to 64 gig and user accessible Wi-Fi card. Otherwise, we can also see the differences in cooling design. The blade uses a vapor chamber cooler, while the Zephyrus has your more traditional heat pipes, and we'll see the differences in thermals soon. The battery in the blade is slightly larger at 80 watt hours versus the 76 watt hour battery in the Zephyrus. In my gaming test up the top, both had the same 30 FPS cap with Nvidia's battery boost, and the blade lasted 22% longer. As the Zephyrus has the option of using G-Sync while the blade does not, I've also included the battery life while watching YouTube with it enabled in the middle, just showing that it burns through power more quickly when compared to using the Intel integrated graphics with Optimus. There was a big difference while watching YouTube with Optimus. The blade lasted around 42% longer than the Zephyrus in this test, and scoring one of the best results out of all gaming laptops I've tested. The Zephyrus also has a cool feature where you can charge it over USB Type-C, so you don't have to travel with the power brick but can instead either get by with a smaller adapter for low powered tasks, or otherwise use a power bank to charge it. I'll also note that during my testing, I never saw the battery drain while plugged in with the Zephyrus, however I did see the battery drain a little over time with the blade though it was slow and didn't seem to affect performance. Now let's take a look at thermals. The Zephyrus was tested in an ambient room temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, while the Blade was tested at 23, 
so I've lowered the Zephyrus results by 1 to account for this difference. This is fine, as ambient room temperature gives us close to a 1 to 1 change to internals. I've got a link in the description if you're after more information on this topic. I should also note that the Zephyrus has turbo mode enabled for these results, while the Blade has gaming mode enabled, so both should be at peak performance here. Turbo mode does however overclock the graphics in the Zephyrus by 100MHz, while gaming mode in the advanced model of the Blade I had here does not apply an overclock, despite previous models I've tested getting an overclock in gaming mode. Alright, there's a lot of data coming, so let me explain the graphs. We'll first look at combined CPU and GPU workloads, in the form of gaming and stress tests. The gaming results were done by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good amount of CPU and GPU. The stress tests were done by running the ADA64 stress test and Heaven benchmark at the same time to fully load the system. On this first graph, we're only looking at the CPU results from these combined workloads. At idle down the bottom, we can see the Zephyrus was a fair bit cooler. Otherwise, at all other levels, the Zephyrus was cooler than the Blade while under the same tests. Though I'll note there was no thermal throttling from either laptop. I'll also note that I have the results for the blade with the cooling pad in use, which does improve the thermals a fair bit. The Zephyrus was not tested with the cooling pad as it doesn't have air vents underneath. These are the clock speeds from the same tests just shown. We can see that the clock speeds from the Zephyrus in purple are higher, so not only is it cooler, but it can reach higher speeds. The CPU undervolts, listed by UV on the graph, were a bit different. Minus 0.07 volts for the Zephyrus, and minus 0.14 volts for the blade. As we can push a bit further on the blade, the gap between the two closes in a little when comparing to the non-undervolted results. However, the Zephyrus is still ahead. Now let's see how the GPU did in these exact same tests. Again, these are combined CPU and GPU results. We're not just looking at the GPU only here, so take these as a worst case. Again, at idle, the blade was a fair bit warmer than the Zephyrus, while the Zephyrus was again cooler in every test. With the cooling pad though, the Blade was able to reach the same temperature on the GPU while gaming as the Zephyrus. So if you're willing to use a cooling pad, improvements are possible. These are the clock speeds for the GPU under these combined CPU and GPU workloads. Once again, the clock speeds from the Zephyrus are ahead of the Blades, and we'll see how this affects gaming performance soon. Just as a reminder, Turbo Mode which was tested with the Zephyrus does apply a 100MHz GPU core overclock, but the Blade's gaming mode does not apply this, though older versions of the Blade would also apply a GPU overclock, so it seems they changed it in the new model. I didn't personally see much difference with a manual overclock on the Blade, it seems to have less GPU headroom. Alright, now we're moving away from combined CPU and GPU workloads to CPU only. These are the CPU temperatures with only the ADA64 stress test running. The GPU was idle for this. Interestingly, the Zephyrus was actually warmer than the Blade here, though we could improve the temperature a little with the undervolt applied. These are the clock speeds for the same tests just shown. Even at stock, the Zephyrus is able to hit the full 3.9GHz all-core turbo speed of the i7-8750H CPU, while the Blade wasn't able to achieve this even while undervolted. This is why the undervolting saw no improvement to the temperature, as it's also performing 500MHz better now. So a nice jump, but the Zephyrus wins at the expense of running a little warmer. To see how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here, and as expected, the Zephyrus is coming out ahead due to those higher clock speeds. There's no difference in single core, and the undervolt does improve the blade's performance. However, the fact is, the Zephyrus is performing better in the same test. If we look at the CPU TDP for the CPU only test, we can see why. Out of the box, the Zephyrus seems to reach 50 watts, while the blade is power limited at 45 watts, regardless of the workload that's being run. My guess is that the Zephyrus can run with a higher power limit as it's got the superior cooling for this to be fine. These are the GPU only results from running the Heaven benchmark, so no CPU tests were running now, this is GPU only. Under the same workload, the temperatures were very similar, just a degree higher for the Zephyrus. The clock speeds reveal that the Zephyrus was achieving higher speeds in this test though, due to the turbo mode overclock, which is just fine by me if it only costs a degree. Overall, in combined CPU and GPU workloads, the Zephyrus is both running cooler and performing better. In CPU or GPU only workloads, the Zephyrus is actually a little warmer. But it's performing better, and the temperatures are still reasonable despite being a little higher than the blades. As for the areas where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle the blade was warmer in the keyboard area, though still cool overall if a little above average. While gaming, the blade's keyboard gets significantly warmer compared to the Zephyrus. The Zephyrus keeps all the heat up the back where you won't be touching. While under the same combined stress test, I noticed the wrist rest area of the blade feel warm. And again, the keyboard is noticeably hotter. Though cooler over the WASD keys comparatively, as the fans below seem to exhaust some air through here. 
As for the fan noise produced by these laptops, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. At idle, the blade was quieter. I couldn't hear the fan, while the Zephyrus was slightly audible, which explains why the blade had a warmer idle temperature earlier. While under the same combined CPU and GPU stress test with turbo mode on for the Zephyrus and gaming mode for the blade, the Zephyrus was running louder. So those cooler temperatures seem to come at the cost of a slightly noisier machine. With all of that in mind, let's take a look at the gaming results. All games were tested with fans at maximum speed. The Zephyrus had turbo mode enabled while the Blade had gaming mode enabled for best performance. I'll also note the Blade was tested with slightly newer Nvidia drivers, as I got it after the Zephyrus. Apex Legends was tested with all settings at maximum or minimum, as it doesn't have predefined presets. I've got the Razer Blade up the top in green and the Asus Zephyrus underneath in purple, while the different setting levels are on the left, so there are multiple results in each graph as I've tested every setting level. In terms of average FPS, the Zephyrus is 16% ahead at max settings. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built-in benchmark, and the Blade was ahead a little at most setting levels and average FPS, though always behind and 1% low. Either way, it was quite close. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode rather than multiplayer, as it's easier to consistently reproduce the test run. With RTX off, we're seeing the Zephyrus ahead at every setting level. At Ultra, it was just 4.5% ahead in terms of average FPS, with further improvements, particularly to 1% low, seen at lower settings. With RTX on, things change a bit. The Blade is now coming out ahead at Ultra and high settings. CSGO was tested with the Uletical FPS benchmark, and the Zephyrus was way ahead here, seeing the largest improvement when compared to the Blade out of all games tested. At maximum settings, the Zephyrus was getting 42% higher average FPS, with a 56% boost at minimum settings. Dota 2 was tested playing in the middle lane with an average amount of action going on, and the Zephyrus was again clearly ahead here, with a 28% lead in average frame rate with all settings maxed out at Ultra, with less of a difference at lower settings. Far Cry New Dawn was tested with the built-in benchmark, and there was basically no real difference at lower settings. But this changes as we increase the setting preset. By the time we get to Ultra, the Zephyrus has a 10.5% lead over the Blade in terms of average FPS. Ghost Recon was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and in this one, much larger differences were seen at lower settings, with 38% higher FPS at low, while Ultra settings saw a 7% boost with the Zephyrus. Overwatch was tested in the practice range, as it allows me to perform the exact same test run, as different maps, bots, and other players affect results. The Zephyrus was ahead in every test, coming out 10% ahead in average FPS when maxed out at epic settings, with some nice boosts to 1% low seen with all other setting levels. Metro Exodus was tested using the built-in benchmark, which represents worst case results from the game. So this isn't indicative of how most of the game will perform, but does allow me to perform the exact same test on each laptop. The Zephyrus was again ahead in every test, seeing an 11% improvement with the Extreme preset and 10% with the RTX preset. PUBG was tested with the replay feature. I think I may have used the exact same replay file, but I'm honestly not sure. Either way, the replay consists of me performing the same pass through the same area, so it shouldn't be too different. With Ultra settings, there was a 15% improvement to average FPS with the Zephyrus. But perhaps more importantly, big gains seen to 1% lows. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the built-in benchmark, and there was a 6% improvement to average FPS with highest settings with the Zephyrus. Shadow of War was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and there was an 8% higher average frame rate in this test at ultra settings on the Zephyrus. Watch Dogs 2 played perfectly fine on either laptop even with ultra settings. I don't think it benefits from a super high frame rate. However, the Zephyrus was scoring 21% faster average FPS when maxed out. The Witcher 3 was tested with Hairworks disabled, and resulted in the Zephyrus achieving 7% higher average frame rate at ultra settings. So less when compared to most other games tested, but still a clear win over the Blade nonetheless. Out of all games tested, when looking at the differences in average FPS at maximum settings, the Asus Zephyrus GX701 was 12% ahead of the Razer Blade 15. A fairly big difference considering they have the same CPU and GPU. While some of this may be due to the Zephyrus having 24GB of memory and the Blade having 16GB, I honestly think that's minimal. There would be some difference due to the clock speed differences covered earlier in the thermal testing. However, I believe the key difference here is that I've tested the Zephyrus with G-Sync enabled, while the Blade loses some performance from Nvidia Optimus. I've got a whole video testing the GX701 with and without G-Sync linked in the description if you want to see the difference. And the average result is close to what we were seeing here. 
With G-Sync on, the Zephyrus performs 15% better compared to G-Sync off. Will you notice these differences between the two laptops while actually playing games? In most games, probably not. But if you're paying this much money, you might be after the best performance. As we saw earlier, we've got the option of overclocking the graphics and undervolting the CPU to improve performance. So let's see how these changes actually help in gaming. I've just tested Far Cry 5 with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings, and there was no improvement on the Zephyrus in terms of average FPS, though the 1% low does see a boost. The Blade on the other hand saw a 3.6% improvement to average FPS once undervolted, which makes sense given the power limitations we saw earlier, which the Zephyrus didn't appear to have. Now for the benchmarking tools. I've tested Unigen Heaven, Valley, and Superposition, as well as 3D Mark's Firestrike, Time Spy, Port Royal, and VR Mark. Just pause the video if you want a detailed look at the results. I've tested storage with Crystal Disk Mark. However, results will vary with different drive sizes and models may vary by region too. The drive in the blade was performing significantly better in terms of reads and a bit better on the writes. But again, this could vary. It's worth remembering each laptop only has one M.2 slot, so you only get one drive. Spending extra for larger capacity is probably a good idea if you have the option. For updated pricing, check the links in the description, as prices will change over time. When I originally reviewed the Blade, it was going for $3,200 US dollars. However, it appears they've already lowered the price to $3,000, presumably to make way for the new 9th gen models. The Zephyrus on the other hand was $3,300 US dollars when I originally reviewed it. However, today it's down slightly by $50, meaning at the time of recording, it's $250 US dollars more expensive, or 8% extra money. It does also come with double the storage space too. Here in Australia, you can get either for the same $5,000 Australian dollars, so not too different when it comes to the price. So which should you spend your money on? There's a lot to unpack here. The obvious difference when you first see them is that the blade is smaller in every dimension and also weighs less, making it more portable. In terms of raw gaming performance, the Zephyrus is performing better in almost all games as it has G-Sync. This has nothing to do with removing screen tearing, though that is a benefit, but means the Nvidia graphics can perform better by sending the signal directly to the display. Over a bunch of games tested, I found an average 12% improvement to FPS with the Zephyrus. So that alone could be justification to spend 8% more money for some people. The Blade on the other hand has to pass through the Intel integrated graphics as part of Optimus, which has some overhead involved. Again, check the video linked in the description for more details on this. G-Sync does come at the cost of reduced battery life outside of gaming, and even if we reboot into Optimus mode, the larger battery in the Blade is noticeably superior. The Blade has Thunderbolt 3 support, which the Zephyrus is missing for some strange reason. I'd expect this to be present at this price point. This means you've got the option of using external graphics with the Blade if you want even more power. Granted, this is an expensive and niche solution. The cooling in the Zephyrus is clearly superior, and not just because it's a larger machine. It has air exhaust vents on the sides, which the Blade doesn't have, and also has the unique lift-up mechanism that rises the base of the laptop up when you open the lid to improve air exhaust. The whole back area behind the keyboard is dedicated to air intake, giving it some seriously impressive cooling for such a thin and powerful machine. As a result, this does come at the cost of the keyboard being placed right at the front of the Zephyrus with a touchpad on the side. There's no getting around the keyboard and touchpad winning on the blade here. Though if you use the laptop on your desk with an external mouse, I don't think there's much difference. The better cooling in the Zephyrus allows it to have higher power limits, which results in it performing better overall. Even outside of gaming in CPU-only workloads, it's coming out ahead, and this would account for some of the difference in the gaming results. Though, as mentioned, I think most of that is G-Sync related. As a result, it is harder to open up and get inside the Zephyrus. However, given the limited upgradeability options, you probably won't need to do this very often anyway. Both laptops only have a single M.2 drive, despite the Zephyrus being physically larger. The spec sheet of the Blade only notes that it's available with a 256GB or 512GB SSD. Honestly, a little small if you only have room for one drive given how big some games are today. The Zephyrus seems to come with a 1TB drive. Though as mentioned before, storage may vary by region. Interestingly, the Zephyrus only has one memory slot. With 8GB soldered to the motherboard, memory upgrades are limited. Though with a single 32GB stick, a total of 40GB should be plenty for most gamers for years to come. However, the Blade can take you to 64GB if needed. As you can see, there are a fair few differences between them. In the end, it comes down to your personal requirements and which one best matches what you'll be using it for. The GX701 makes more sense for a stationary gaming machine, yet is still not that big compared to other thicker 17-inch laptops if you need to move it, while the Razer Blade 15 is a fair bit smaller while still packing a powerful punch. 
with better battery life that makes it even better as a portable option. Let me know which one you'd go for down in the comments. The Asus Zephyrus S or Razer Blade 15. And if you're new here, get subscribed for future comparisons and tech videos like this one. Actually, you know what? I suspect this will be one of the longest videos I've ever made. So let me know in the comments if you actually made it to the end.